In this tutorial, I'm going to guide you on how to install Flutter on a Mac. Once this installation is done, you will be able to use your Apple computer to develop applications for Android, iOS, web and Mac desktop applications. The first step is to install Xcode, which is Apple's integrated development environment. To do this, open the Apple App Store and search for the term Xcode. Access the Application tab and press the Download button. If your Mac has an Apple Silicon chip, it is important that you install Rosetta 2, which is Apple's translation layer for the old programs that run on Intel to the new Apple Silicon chips. Although today Flutter is 100% compatible with Apple Silicon, there are still some old components that require this software. To install Rosetta 2, open your terminal application and type the following command. You will have to enter your administrator password to install it. After that, you can run this command to determine if Rosetta 2 has been installed correctly on your Mac. If the output you get is similar to what you see on the screen, it means that it has been installed correctly. Once Xcode has been installed, open it to accept the licenses. Click on Agree to accept the conditions. You will have to enter your password in this step. On this screen you have already marked the macOS option. You are also going to mark the iOS option to be able to deploy your apps to an iPhone or iPad. Click on Download and Install so that Xcode can obtain the necessary components for this task. Afterwards, Xcode will open and the installation of an iOS simulator may begin. Click on Continue for now. Now you are going to install Flutter. Later in this tutorial you will reopen Xcode for further configuration. Now you're going to install the Flutter binary on your Mac. To do this, go to flutter.dev, select the macOS option, scroll down to the section to obtain the SDK, and download the appropriate package depending on whether you have a Mac with Intel or Apple Silicon chip. Once downloaded, unzip the package to a location of your choice. In order to be able to execute Flutter commands from anywhere on your machine, it is important to add the path to the Flutter binary to your path environment variable. To do this, it will be necessary to edit a file. Go back to your terminal and go to your root user directory. If you use bash, you should edit the .bash profile file. If you have zshell installed like me, the file to edit is .zshrc. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then edit the .bash underscore profile file. I'm going to edit this file using Beam, but feel free to use any other text editor of your choice. Go to the end of the file and add the following line. Please note that here you must indicate the path where you have unzipped the Flutter folder. In my case, I have it in my user directory, then in the opt folder. Please verify that the path you write is correct and that it points to the bin folder within the Flutter folder. Now we're going to reload the path variable with the source command indicating the file we just edited. In my case, .zshrc. If you type flutter in the terminal and press enter, you should have some type of output similar to mine. If you got a message similar to flutter could not be found, then verify that you have indicated the correct path in the edited file. Next, we're going to execute the flutter doctor command. This command will indicate the current installation status, indicating all the requirements met and those that remain to be met. Now you are going to prepare your environment to be able to develop for Android. To do this, the first step is to install Android Studio. Even if your preferred IDE is Visual Studio Code, I advise you to install Android Studio, since it will also install the Android SDK and the Android emulator. To install Android Studio, go to developer.android.com slash studio and hit the download button. Scroll down and accept the licenses. Then download the appropriate version depending on the type of chip you have. Once the file is downloaded, double click on it to start the installation. Drag the icon to the applications folder. Now open Spotlight and type Android Studio to run it. It will ask you if you want to run this application downloaded from the internet. Say yes. 
Click OK to not import any settings and choose if you want to share your data to improve Android Studio. In this step, you can choose the option you want since it does not affect the installation process. Click on Next and choose the custom option to customize the installation. Next again, and here deselect Android Virtual Device. You will create the Android emulator later. Click on Next. Next again. Here you must accept all the licenses to continue and press Finish to finish the process. Now we are going to install the Flutter plugin for Android Studio. This step is important since Android Studio does not support Flutter by default. To do this, go to the folder of your choice and run flutter create flutter underscore test underscore app to create a test app. Now go back to Android Studio and open the app you just created. Android Studio may ask you if you trust this app, tell it that yes. Now go to Android Studio, then settings. Go to plugins and there type flutter. Press install to install the Flutter plugin. You will be told that the Dart plugin is also going to be installed. Accept it. Once installed, click on Restart IDE to restart Android Studio. Now click on the button with the wheel icon and choose SDK Manager. Go to the SDK Tools tab and select Android SDK Command Line Tools. Click OK and click OK again to install this necessary plugin. Click on Finish once finished. Now go back to the terminal and run Flutter Doctor again to see what steps are left. It will tell you that there are Android licenses to accept. To solve it, run Flutter Doctor dash dash Android dash licenses. Here you will have to enter the letter Y to accept each license and hit Enter. Go back to the terminal to run a Flutter Doctor. You will see that the Android platform is ready to be used. Now you are going to create a virtual emulator or AVD to run Android applications without having a physical device. To do this, in Android Studio, click on this icon in the right sidebar. Press the button with the plus symbol to create an emulator. Here choose the device you want. I'm going to choose a Pixel 5 since it has a manageable size. This selection only serves to choose a screen size and density, nothing more. Now choose which API level you want to install. I recommend that you choose one that is not very old. Click on this button next to the API level to start the download. Once the process is finished, click on Finish to continue creating the AVD. Click on Next. Here you can configure the AVD. I'm going to change the boot option to called boot out of personal preference, but you can leave it as is if you want. I'm also going to remove the SD card since I don't think I need it. Click on Finish to create the AVD. Once created, you can execute it by clicking this button with the play drawing. Wait a while and the AVD should appear. Now you should try to see if your test tab works. First, you should try it from the integrated terminal. To do this, press this button and first execute Flutter Poof Get to obtain the app dependencies. Then execute Flutter Run. If everything went well, you should be able to see the application running on the AVD. Enter the letter Q in the terminal and press Enter to kill the app. Now you will test it by running directly from Android Studio. You can do it by pressing this button at the top with the play icon. If everything went well, you should see the app running in the emulator again. You are going to prepare your Mac to be able to build Flutter applications for iOS devices. First, let's configure the Xcode command line tools. Enter the following commands and run them in your terminal. As before, you will have to authenticate as an administrator to be able to run them. Run Flutter Doctor again to see the status. As you see, it tells you that you have to install CocoaPods, which is a specific package manager for iOS. Install it with the command sudo gem install CocoaPods. It is possible that the installation completes successfully the first time, or it is also possible that it happens what just happened to me, where the output shows you an error similar to the one you see on the screen. 
If that is the case, just run the command that the Cocoa Pods installer suggests to be able to set its dependencies correctly. You may have to repeat this step with several dependencies until the installation command returns no errors. Run Flutter Doctor again. If everything goes well, it will tell you that the iOS environment is correct. Now open Xcode, go to the test app you created before, go to the iOS folder and open the runner.exe workspace file. This file opens the native iOS part of the Flutter app. Here what we should do is make sure that we have our Apple account correctly configured. Go to Xcode, Accounts and add your developer account if you have not done so already. Now click on Runner, Sign in and Capabilities and choose your development team. Now go back to Android Studio and choose to open an iOS simulator as a test device. Once the simulator has launched, press the play button. If everything went well, you should be able to see the test application running in the simulator. Next, we are going to make sure that the environment is well configured to be able to develop Flutter applications for the web. Run Flutter Doctor. At this point, if you do not have Chrome installed, you will see an error like the one you see on the screen. If you already have Chrome installed, this error will not appear and you can simply launch your Flutter app by choosing Chrome in Android Studio. However, if you do not have Chrome, you can obtain it by going to the address you see on the screen. Then press the Download Chrome button and once it has been downloaded, drag it to the Applications folder to install it. Run Flutter Doctor again. You should see that the previous error has disappeared. Now go back to Android Studio and choose Chrome Web in the Targets drop-down. Press the play button to verify that the test app is indeed running in an instance of the browser. For this last step, you're going to make sure that you can run the app as a desktop application on your Mac. You've already set up Xcode with everything you need. So go to Android Studio and select macOS Desktop as the development target. Then press the Run button. You should see the test application running like a desktop application. And that brings us to the end of our tutorial. If you're interested in learning more about Flutter, feel free to click on the video displayed on the screen. In it, I will guide you through a detailed step-by-step -step process on how to use Flutter effectively. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Goodbye.